In this video, we're going to see how to leverage topics in Kafka, along with some of the Java Collections framework, including SET, to create a quick and dirty dashboard of photos that have been processed by our post processor and those that have not yet been processed. So, a bit of recollection here. We've created an application by assembling together a series of microservices. First of all, we have the plant data that comes from plantplaces.com in a JSON feed. Secondly, we have the bulk of our application, which is this plant diary application with a relational database. We also have this image resizer that's over to the right, which is kind of a, a heavy lifting process, so we've attached it together with a queue. Although now in the land of Kafka, this would be a topic. So what I want to do is I want to have a topic that this image resizing program writes to when it's complete, so that our plant diary service can see what's gone into the photo resizer and what has come out of the photo resizer. Now a nice thing about Kafka is this property called Auto Create Topics Enable, which has a default value of true, which means if you try to write to a topic that does not yet exist, it will just go ahead and create that for you. As a matter of fact, uh, while the video was not recording, I went ahead and updated our topic. It used to be called test. It's now called photo in. That's the topic that our plant diary writes to and that our photo processor reads from. So let's make a new topic here. Let's do a, a Kafka template. And we'll simply control one to import. And then we'll put the auto wired annotation on the top. And once again, control one to import that. Now here again, remember we're in this kind of side process, this photo processor. Now take a look at the try catch block and let's use this to our advantage. This is a quiz question I ask a lot of times, which is how to try catch blocks work. Well, what's going to happen is every line here is going to execute. If one of those lines fails to execute, then it's going to throw an exception, which means it's going to skip execution of each following line and jump right, right to the catch block. So what we could do here is the last line of our try catch before the catch, we can say Kafka template, and then we'll say dot send, and we'll give it a, a, a uh, we'll give it a, a topic name of photo out. And then we'll simply pass in exactly what we received so we can do a like for like match. So we'll say photo out and then we'll say path, which is what we received when this, uh, when this was invoked. Now what about the exception case? We probably should have a template that represents the exception case too, or rather a topic that represents the exception case. So let's make one called photo exception and path. There we go. So now we're going to, our photo processor is going to receive items and photo in. It is going to write to photo out if every line here executes properly, which means no exception was thrown. But if an exception was thrown, it's not going to get to line 41. It's going to stop executing wherever that exception was thrown. The catch block will put it, pick it up and it will throw it into this photo exception path. Okay, so that wraps up our photo processor. Let's go back now to our main uh, application for the plant diary. So we go to the plant diary, let's go to our DAO folder, just like so, and let's make a new DAO. Right click new, and we'll say class, and we'll call this one dashboard DAO. And we will extract an interface later for right now, dashboard DAO will be just fine. Now we need to make three methods on here and each method is going to listen to one of those cues. So I'll tell you what, let's run right back to that photo processor so I can borrow the Kafka listener annotation because we're going to place this over each method in our dashboard DAO. So let's make one. Uh, we'll make one method that is a process photo out and then we'll make one called, we'll say, we'll say public void process photo out, public void process photo in, and finally public void process photo error. Okay, and then we'll put an annotation above each of these, whoops, just like so. Photo, well that was photo out, we can change this in just a moment. So photo out should be at the top. And finally, photo, I think we called that exception, didn't we? Photo exception. 
Let's, let's just double check quickly. Uh, sure enough, we called it photo exception. So let's call this one process photo exception. Okay, each of these will receive a string path. So we'll make that the parameter for each of these methods. It's a little tricky because we're working in the same development environment for both our image resizer program, the photo post processor, and our main plant diary uh, program. So I just want to point out the DAO that we're creating is here in this, in this uh, main plant diary application. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a series of sets. We're going to say set photo out equals new hash set. And actually we could do that. We could probably initialize these in a constructor. It'd be a little bit easier. Uh, so control one and we'll import hash set and control one again and we'll import set. Now set is an interface hash set is a, uh, is a class that implements that interface. So a set guarantees that everything inside of it is unique. So in other words, we couldn't have two Brandons in photo in, photo out. We could only have one Brandon. This makes it really easy to do uh, a little bit of math on these. If you think about union intersection difference, these are really built well for that. So photo exception equals new hash set. There we go. Now in process photo out, we know that this is going to be invoked anything is, anytime anything is added to the photo out queue, or, or sorry, topic. And we know that items are added to that photo out topic once the photo post processor has finished processing them. So uh, in this case, let's say photo out, and then we'll say dot add, and we'll say path, just like so. And for photo in, we can say photo in uh, dot add, and then we'll say path, just like so. And once again, uh, for photo exception, we'll say photo exception dot add, and once again, path, just like so. What I might eventually do, the path is kind of long, I might eventually come back and just grab that last item off of the path, in other words, the file name. We can consider that a future refactoring if we want. One thing that I should do though is I should make these sets private, and then I should make them accessible through getters and setters for our higher level uh, methods. So let's go ahead and do a control one, and we'll say generate getters and setters, or we can do a right click refactor, that'll work too. So right click refactor, and we'll say encapsulate field, that'll work, okay? Okay. Source, generate getters and setters, that's a bit more efficient because we can do them all at once. And generate. Okay, a little shifting here to put them in the right place. And now we can go ahead, right click, refactor, and let's say extract interface, and we'll call it i-dashboard DAO. And we'll select each of these methods that have been created. Actually, the process we don't really need. Yeah, process we can leave in there. Let's grab just the getters and setters. We can always amend the interface later, but this will be good enough for now. So I choose OK. It's giving me some warnings up here. I should parameterize, add some generic parameters to my set types. So I'm going to go ahead and do that before I forget, just like so. And like so. And hopefully that will take care of a lot of those yellow lines, make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, looks like we probably ought to, we will make the getters and setters the same as well. I'll pause the video and do that off camera. One more thing we want to do is add the at component annotation to tell Spring to pay attention to this class. Now one more subtle change but very important change and that is remember what a topic is. It means that multiple, uh, multiple consumers can read from this topic but here's a challenge. What if we have multiple threads of one consumer and we only want an item to be read once? Well, that's what this thing called group ID is for. So take a look at our photo processor. You notice it has the group ID plant places. Now take a look at our dashboard and note that it also has the group ID plant places. If we were to run this as is, this would give us a challenge because photo in would only be read once. It would either be read by our dashboard DAO or it would be read by the photo post processor because they both share the same group ID. So let's change this. In the, uh, in the photo post processor, let's make it plant photos. And we will do the same in the uh, application 
uh, properties for the post processor. We'll change it from group ID plant places to group ID plant photos. Now let's start in the debugger and let's see how it looks. I've set a few careful breakpoints here. So let's start by putting in a latitude longitude description. We'll say uh, bloom zoom and eastern redbud. This is a plant that I this is a, I just grabbed a new photo for us, so we'll go with this uh, flower close up and choose upload. Now you note the eclipse debugger lights up in orange, so let's take a look. Right now we're in save photo image, which is where we're uploading the photo from the user. Just take a look on the left side and you notice this is right now the only breakpoint that is waiting. So this is going to upload the image from the user, save it to the server, and then add it to the topic called photo in. Now as soon as I choose F6 or F8 on this line, I expect that two different breakpoints are going to hit because I have two different methods that are subscribed to this topic called photo in. So let me go ahead and choose F8 and take a look. We have one breakpoint that stopped in our photo post processor application, and that's the one that does the image resizing. Now we scroll down and look at this. We also have our dashboard DAO, uh, which has picked up the photo from the same topic. So it's going to take this photo and add it to the current set. And I'm going to go ahead and choose F8 there because there's not much exciting going on there. Let's go back up to the photo post processor now. And I will choose F6 as it goes through, it grabs the photo, it watermarks the photo, resizes the photo, and that's gonna take just a moment, which is why we have this as an offline process. And then it sends the completed photo to the photo out topic. Now I'm going to choose F8 here, and I anticipate when I choose F8, we'll no longer see the breakpoint stopped here, but we'll see a new breakpoint stopped on our plant places application up here. So take a look as I choose F8, and sure enough, what breakpoint has picked up over in our plant places application? Well, the photo out breakpoint has picked up, indicating that it's listening to this topic and now it's received confirmation that the photo post processor has finished processing. And I choose F8. So at this point, our photo out has the photo that was processed and our photo in has the photo that was processed. So we can confirm that we sent this photo off to be resized and that the resizer finished its job. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and wrap up this video here. Is this video was about looking at two different, uh, looking at several topics actually, but seeing how we can use the group ID to listen to two different topics. In our next video, we're going to build the business logic and the user interface to actually create a dashboard out of this. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.